So here are the answers to the questions from the end of the previous chapter. Have a read through and add some extra details to your answers if there's anything you're missing. So let's have a look at exchange in plants. Now this pinky coloured image in the middle of the screen here, um, this is a microscope shot of the underside of a leaf and you can see that uh, there are a couple of stomata in view. Now the stomata or stoma is singular, stomata is plural. That's the hole in the middle and on either side of the hole are the guard cells. Now these control the size of the stomata. When the guard cells are full of water, when they're plump, when there's plenty of water in them, they hold the hole open. And then, when the leaf is short of water, the guard cells tend to flop, and as they flop, they collapse inwards and close the hole, so they can control the size of the stomata. Now, oxygen leaves through the stomata by diffusion, and carbon dioxide enters through the stomata by diffusion. Now, substances are transported around the plant by xylem and phloem tissue. Now, xylem tissue transports water and mineral ions from the roots up to the leaves and the stem. But the phloem carries dissolved sugars. Now these sugars are the products of photosynthesis. So the sugars are made in the leaves and then they're transported in the phloem to the rest of the plant. So they're kind of going in the opposite direction to the flow in the xylem. So let's have a look at the movement of water in detail. Now, this is called the transpiration stream. Now, the definition of a transpiration stream is the movement of water from the roots through the xylem and out of the leaves through the stomata by evaporation. Now, it's the root hair cells which do all the work of absorption in the roots. Now these have root hairs, these little extensions, you can just about make them out there in my microscope image. These little extensions, root hairs, increase the surface area for absorption. Now, in the roots, the water is absorbed by osmosis. But mineral ions are often absorbed by active transport because often the root hair cells are pulling the mineral ions against the concentration gradient. So water and mineral ions are absorbed at the root in the root hair cells and then they move through the root into the xylem and they're pulled up the xylem. Now you can see here the water moving up the xylem. Now it's pulled up the xylem and into the leaves. Now, once the water has moved into the leaves, it then moves into the air spaces and evaporates out through the stomata. Now, evaporation from stomata will be speeded up when the conditions are hot, when they're dry, and when they're windy. And stomata can close, which will help to prevent wilting. As I said a minute ago, the guard cells, when they're very uh, short of water, when they've lost water, they flop and they flop inwards and they close that hole. Now the leaf itself is well adapted as a gas exchange surface because it's got a thin flattened shape that provides a large surface area and it's got internal air spaces which also provide a large surface area. So transpiration, again, is the movement of water from the roots through the xylem and out of the leaves through the stomata by evaporation. You need to learn that definition. So here's the root hair cell again and you can see it's surrounded by soil particles. Now ions in the soil solution are absorbed by active transport because the concentration of ions in the cells is usually higher than in the soil. So the ions have to be moved against the concentration gradient. But water is absorbed by osmosis. It's always osmosis where water is concerned because the solution in the soil is usually more dilute than in the cells. Now water is pulled up the xylem by the effect of evaporation through the stomata. 
So water evaporates and leaves through the stomata. So this is a typical graph that you might see in an exam question. It shows how the rate of transpiration varies at different times of the day. And you can see it peaks round about lunchtime. That's probably when the weather is warmest. And as we just said a minute ago, evaporation through the stomata is faster in dry, warm, windy conditions. So the unit on the y-axis is given in arbitrary units. Now arbitrary just means made up units. It doesn't matter what they are. All it shows you is the increase. So a typical uh, exam question might ask you, calculate the rate of increase of transpiration between 8 o'clock and 12 o'clock. So first of all, work out what the increase is and then divide that by the number of hours. If you turn your head upside down, you'll see the answer. Now, in school, you might have done an experiment involving potometers. And these are little apparatus. It might look like this in the diagram, or it might be simpler than that. But basically, it's a leafy shoot, uh, which is attached to the end of a very thin glass tube called a capillary tube, which is full of water. And if you introduce an air bubble into the end and let transpiration take place, then you can track the movement of the air bubble as the column of water is pulled up into the chute and is lost through the stomata. So you can use it to measure the water uptake of a chute. And what you measure is the distance travelled by the bubble in a certain time. And you can calculate the rate by dividing the distance by the time taken. Now some potometers look like this and they have a reservoir of water so when you open that little tap it pushes the bubble back out again so you can reposition it. Some potometers will simply be a straight up and down capillary tube with nothing so fancy as a reservoir of water. So have a go then at answering these questions on exchange in plants.